right guys welcome back to the channel if you're new my name is Bobby today we are finally going to talk about wheat yes you guys been asking me since I started this channel how about wheat Bobby do you smoke what do you think about wheat so guys let me elaborate today we're gonna to talk about my personal history with wheat we're gonna talk about the present moment do I smoke right now and we're gonna elaborate what my general thoughts about wheat about that plant medicine is all right so wheat and me go way way back i smoked my first joint when i was 11 years old i believe 11 or 12 so i started really really early i never smoked on a regular basis it was an occasional thing I smoked in school, I smoked on the weekends, but periodically I would always start smoking and then stop again. It wasn't as if I would smoke for years and years on end when I was 12 years old. It was the occasional joint. Whenever we could get our hands on it, we would smoke one. I believe the main reason why I didn't smoke on a regular daily basis was that back in the day we would only get indica and to this very day i can't stand indica indica if you don't know is the slower strain of marijuana the strain that you would typically think of if you think about wheat it has all those side effects such as being lazy hanging on the couch getting sleepy and drowsy sativa on the other hand is very psychoactive and it brings me into this active energized mood but let me continue with my history so to speak it wasn't up until i was around about 21 or 22 years old that we actually got a stream of very very high grade sativa and i started smoking daily before that, as I said, Indica wasn't for me. With the Sativa, I really got into it and I started loving it. I got deep spiritual insights out of it back in the day when I was 21. I hadn't had any real psychedelics. I haven't touched mushrooms or LSD or what have you. And therefore, marijuana really opened me up to the knowledge of the universe to the secrets of this realm if you will honestly i remember those days we had high grade wheat and me and my friend we would smoke it and start philosophizing about the universe about 2012 the mayan calendar and whatnot it was fascinating and it benefited me i would say at that time every time i would smoke it i was still able to go to the gym was still able to hold a conversation was still able to have a clear mind with that sativa that really worked for me but after a while it started defeating the purpose every time i would smoke i would get anxiety essentially i would get paranoid at that moment i was smoking at least two grams every single day and as i said it started defeating the purpose when I started tripping out on mushrooms, I essentially found a new teacher plant, so to speak, and I essentially ditched marijuana for good. So with that, we come to the present moment. In the last year, I smoked two times, and it wasn't even my own joint. It wasn't like I had two joints or what have you. No, but on two different occasions, I took a couple of hits, maybe three or four hits or so. So nowadays I don't smoke anymore. At least I'm not considering this really actively smoking. And therefore now we're coming to the part where I want to elaborate why that is, why it doesn't serve me anymore and what my general thoughts on wheat are. See, every plant that we ingest has its own consciousness. It doesn't matter which plant you use. If we take a daily example in our society, we like to drink coffee. If you drink coffee, that coffee has an effect on your consciousness. It gets you wired, makes you more active, it makes you more productive. For some people it works, for some people it doesn't. If you consume alcohol, you get an effect out of it 
as well. But it is not strong enough, the connection isn't strong enough for people to realize that they're actually communicating to a plant. Everything has consciousness. If you eat a carrot, if you eat a banana, everything has its own information stored in its DNA, if you will. Everything has a molecular memory and has a spirit to it. The teacher plants are only called teacher plants because they have very strong characteristics to them and they influence our consciousness more actively than others. So, if you choose to communicate with a teacher plant, then you have to ask yourself the question, why do you do that? What is the purpose behind it? Why do you want to undergo a symbiosis with a certain plant? If you compare a plant to a human being, why would you like to go into a relationship with a specific human being? Maybe you go into the relationship of a friend. Maybe you involve yourself into a romantic relationship. The question becomes, why do you do that? And if it isn't serving you, you're better off to quit that relationship, obviously. But when it comes down to marijuana, a lot of people don't reflect that much. They just want to get stoned quickly and they don't understand that they're undergoing a symbiosis. If you really listen, you will hear what Mary Jane has in store for you. And she has a message. And yes, it's a she. It's a female teacher. And for me, the female energy in form of a teacher never works out well. Sorry, ladies, but it is what it is. This is why I cannot communicate freely with ayahuasca. Ayahuasca isn't for me. I learn the most of strong, disciplined teachers, such as the magic mushroom. The mushroom has a very male presence to it. I talked about it before. And Mary Jane is called Mary Jane for a reason. It is because it has a female aura. And this female aura, this female energy wants you to have a male-driven purpose behind it. For example, let's take an example out of music. Let's talk about Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is the stoner. Everybody knows him for smoking weed. So Snoop Dogg has an active symbiosis with the plant. Does it serve a purpose? Of course it does. Snoop Dogg uses weed for his creative work. Snoop Dogg uses weed and makes millions of dollars creating music. Therefore, it has a certain purpose. And even though I don't know Snoop Dogg and I haven't talked to him, I'm pretty sure that he knows that he uses marijuana for creative purposes and such. But if you start abusing marijuana, if you start abusing Mary Jane, and all you do with her is sitting on the couch and watching TV, obviously that won't be appreciated by her. Just like your girlfriend who wouldn't appreciate you just sitting on the couch and essentially doing nothing, becoming lazy. And when that happens, it becomes a downward spiral with the difference that Mary Jane won't break up with you. Then it's time for you to break up with her because she isn't serving the purpose and you have an unhealthy relationship with her. And this was my main reason back in the day. Hey, if you get something out of it, if you get creativity out of it, if you use it for medicinal benefits, more power to you. Definitely go for it. I'm absolutely not against it. If anything, I said it many, many times, I'm for the legalization of all substances. I'm for the legalization of every single plant, for food, for recreational purposes, for medicinal purposes, for spiritual purposes, what have you. I don't want to be restricted by a nanny state, by a government that looks over us. But for me, I cannot learn anything of marijuana anymore. I even had periods where the magic mushroom told me that it has been enough and that I have to go on my own physical journey, to go traveling, 
and to not rely on the lessons that the mushroom told me because those lessons have been learned. So this is key here. If you still have lessons to learn and it's kind of tricky with that female energy because it's not as straightforward, it might appear as if you get something out of her but then it's just yet again another test. So therefore, as I said, if you had enough lessons of Mary Jane, she won't teach you anything anymore, but it will be a destructive relationship. Now it is up to you to break it up. Another thing that I want to add here is an epiphany that I got whilst hiking Machu Picchu, and I realized that I was always longing for wheat when I was in an unnatural habitat. When I was living in the city, and even nowadays, when I am in the city for prolonged periods, I start to long for Mother Nature. And if I cannot be physically in Mother Nature, then I will start longing and craving marijuana as a quick fix, so to speak. Something that will catapult me back into mother nature and i see that with a lot of people that live in our modern day cities in our western environments most of those people that have this initial calling for nature like to compensate that with smoking a lot of weed the tricky part here is that if you smoke too much of it you're highly likely to stay in your environment because it is a quick fix yes you are in an unnatural environment and marijuana makes it feel more natural again. But if you do it on a daily basis, instead of interpreting the signs, instead of understanding the message that you have to get yourself into nature, you might go into that plant-human symbiosis, that plant-human fusion and just remain on the couch. So you didn't get the memo. This is what I found about marijuana as well. As long as I was smoking it, I would always get back and get the sense of a more natural feeling, but I wouldn't leave Germany. I would always stay in my unnatural habitat. Once I stopped, I realized what the real missing link was, and the real missing link was real first-hand experiences in the jungle, in the forest, hiking, Machu Picchu. So therefore it just becomes a compensation for the real thing. All right guys, and this is pretty much all I have to say about marijuana. Nowadays it's really not a big part of my life anymore. When somebody offers me a couple of puffs, yeah, sure, why not? Same with the alcohol, as I said. I'm not learning anything of it anymore. I'm just going with the flow and I enjoy the taste occasionally, as I said, in the last year, maybe twice or so, and that is pretty much it. All right, guys, if you like the video, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And as always, guys, much love and peace.